Hello everybody, welcome back to the DS here, bringing you more Pokemon Emerald goodness, and in this video, we're taking on the gym, as you couldn't tell. Alright, so, I don't have any ground types outside of Geodude, uh, but thankfully not all of the gym relies on, on electric types explicitly. For example, this girl actually uses Metatite, uh, so that actually is a lot easier for me. You can get away with one of your flying types uh, in this particular gym anyway. Although this guy has an electric type, so you gotta be wary of that. But with Curlia's Confusion, I'm not really having much of a problem here. And I could probably just frickin... Oh, the uh, gimmick of this gym is these little electrical fences. You have to hit the buttons, and uh, hitting the buttons will either turn on one set or turn off the other, vice versa. You have to fight every trainer in here to actually get to the end, so don't even bother with not grinding against them. It's pretty much required. Well, actually, no, it's not, but fuck it, we'll do it anyway. Also, I'm already hearing fireworks. Also, a bug catcher. I guess the reason he's in here is because his Pokemon knows Shockwave. So this gym isn't so much an electric-type gym, but a gym with Pokemon that know electric-type moves. And if you're wondering why Metatite might be in a gym like that, it's because Metacham, or Metatite, rather, knows uh, Thunder Punch. Oh, fuck, I probably should have switched out for that. Don't hit yourself. What did I just say? I right, find them. Do I have a revive? I think I have a revive. Revive, revive, I have two. And I do have Super Potion. Use one on you, use a Potion on you. And let's go for Watson. Alright, the Jovial third gym leader of the Hoenn region. Hopefully we don't get utterly decimated, but I don't think we will. Especially now that I have Psychic. Perfect move to use for Curlia. I'm going to switch out for this stuff. Electric should go down with one shot with even a low mag. Okay, maybe not. Magnitude 6 though? That's enough. Magneton definitely gets one shot by Magnitude. And his last Pokemon is Manectric. I don't need self destruct right now. I don't think Manectric has Bite. Not that it will really matter anyway. Oh, Magnitude 10. You're gone. Okay, there we go. So yeah, a ground type makes this gym a complete and utter just joke, honestly. But now we have the move a Shockwave, which I will be giving to Curlia. Should I do it right now? I can get Thunderbolt uh, later on. Oh, but now that we have access to Rock Smash as an outside battle move, we can now give it to this fucking thing that's pretty much just wasting a slot of my party and go back to what's essentially the Cave of Two Lovers, if you've ever seen that episode of Avatar The Last Airbender. Fuck yeah. Uh, oh, we gotta get rid of you first. And I know what I said a dozen videos ago or whatever about not going too fast, but I'm also, like, showing a lot more than I originally intended. Uh, also, woo. Hi, Wismer. Glad I don't have repels on right now. Uh, repel, 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 repel. Repel, repel, repel! There we go. Uh, over here, I believe? You talk to this guy, he will tell you about his glasses. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select the item finder. Turn it on. Keep using it until I find some. Black glasses. I think I can talk to him after that. Those glasses. I may see them for may I see them for a second? Oh, these are black glasses. Not what I'm looking for. Leave my glasses on around. And he just leaves. There's also another item over here, which is an HP up, which is not useful as far as what it actually does, but for right now it could be used to sell to get a good amount of money. But yeah, the black glasses are a held item that increase the power of dark type moves by 20%. Definitely something useful if you have a dark type user in your party. These two people here, who are on the other side of the tunnel, 
We have to see the Rock Smash in front of them, and he will give us the Strength HN. Definitely do this before you go any further, because otherwise you will have to backtrack here, uh, without fly, mind you, uh, to actually get the damn HM to continue on with the game. Okay, so we're pretty much giving, like, I'm pretty much giving, like, all of my screen time to, uh, Curlia and Combuskin at the moment. Let's see if we can get Aaron a little bit more in the spotlight here. Aaron's probably a final team member. I usually like to have Aaron on my team for the last bit. And I've always called it Aaron and not Aaron or Auron or whatever. Aaron just sounds more like it to me. I mean, I've met people with the name that, like, that name that's spelled the exact same way and they call themselves Aaron, but Aaron in the case of the Pokemon, I'm going with that. Little Claw, Double Kick. Also, I figure I might as well take on the Windstraight family. Uh, not because they're really of any significance, but because they do give us... Uh, they do give us a good bit of extra experience and the item, the Macho Brace. The Windstraight house right here. We have to fight four trainers, a family, mind you, in Sequenta. In Sequentia. I think that's the word? In Sequentia, I guess? I don't know. But they're all pretty pushover trainers. The main uh, reason you fight them is to get the Held Item, the Macho Brace. Now what the Macho Brace does is, as a at a consequence of making your Pokémon slower in battle, it will double the EVs that the Pokémon earns in the battle. So, for example, if a Pokémon gives two EVs in special attacks, such as that Roselia I just fought, but your Pokémon is holding a Macho Brace, you will instead receive four EVs in Special Attack instead of the traditional two. Pretty useful. It literally cuts the time it takes to level or to EV grind in half. Uh, but again, considering I'm using Pika Hex, that's not really an essay, a necessity at this point. Nor is it even an issue. Also, even with a Lucky Egg, some of these guys' Pokémon are still barely giving me any experience. Oh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. You wanna kick my fucking Metatite or kick my fucking Aeron in the face and kill it? And then you're gonna be a coward and keep protecting yourself, huh? Fine. Get the hell out of my face. All right. So I think I should heal. My Aeron is dead, so I'll actually have to go to a fucking Pokemon Center. But yeah, the mother will give us the Macho Brace. At first, when I part, when I started playing Pokémon, I had no idea what the hell that item did, and I thought from the description that it was simply an item that hindered your Pokémon. When it said lowers the speed at the cost of speed, I thought that that meant that it makes the Pokémon slower and nothing else. I didn't know that the growth increase meant anything. I'm also going to ignore the publicity people over there because I have no desire to tell them, to tell them anything about myself. Plus, they're, again, just another free battle experience. Okay, cool, flinch. Aaron's probably going to be the hardest to evolve. Uh, she doesn't evolve into Laron until level 32. Uh, Gardevoir evolves at level 30 and Combuskin at 36. So they're overall much faster to level up to their final forms. Agron doesn't... You don't get Agron until level 42. So that is a bit away. Uh, also, real quick as well, in case you are in need of a fire type, this is the route that you are able to obtain a Numel, and a cave that is up front that we will be going into momentarily is where you can acquire uh, Slugma as well. Oh god, I almost fucking... I almost got rid of Metal Claw for Roar! <laughs> I was too distracted. <laughs> Thank god I hit the B button. Metal Claw is my primary attacking move for Aeron until I get Iron Tail. Even then, it might be even still on her because of Iron Tail's low accuracy. Although Iron Tail has literally twice the power. I can also probably give it Double Edge when it learns that eventually. Alright. So up next, we got a couple Rock Guys. This guy has nothing but Geodudes, so what do we have for that? Metal Claw. Another Geodude, another Metal Claw. What else? Another Geodude, another Metal Claw. 
Oh, and I, <laughs> I fucking doubled my attack thanks to Metal Claw special effect. I'm also gonna challenge this guy, just get him out of the way. We can't go up the ski lift yet. Or, I guess it can't be really called a ski lift, considering it's on an active volcano and not a snowy mountain, but... The point is, we can't go up there yet, because Team Magma's blocking our way. We have to go the long way around to another side of the mountain, uh, in order to get them out. Uh, in this cave, again, there's more Numels. Uh, you can also capture Machop, Coughing, Grimer, and I forget what else. I know Slugmoth's probably still in this cave? Uh, could not be... I might not be 100% correct on that. But Weezing and Grimer are really not worth it in this game. Uh, this game is not kind to Poison-type Pokémon. Or, really, most Pokémon games aren't kind to Poison-types. Unless you're Venusaur in Pokémon Gen 1. And I mean, like, Red and Blue, not Fire Red and Leaf Green Gen 1. Although, I have done pretty good work in Fire Red and Leaf Green with a, uh... With a Venusaur before. Maybe I'll do that as one of the polls for the next Let's Play. Get out a lot of the GameCube, or the Game Boy games out of the way. I do eventually want to do... Hold on, what am I doing? Terror Bears. I do eventually want to do, um... All of the Pokemon games, basically. Um, but that's obviously something that takes a while. Oh, this is a fire guy. The, the models can sometimes trick you into thinking that you're going to fight one type of trainer when you're actually going to fight something totally different, which I really find kind of annoying uh, because the trainer model for the Kindler and the Rockstar is the same trainer model, and the Rockstars typically have electric types, and the Kindlers typically have fire types. So you can go into a battle against a Kindler with a water type thinking you're going to be able to take it out easily and then only realize that it's a fucking Rockstar and then get your ass wrecked. Or, you can go into battle thinking that it's a fucking, uh, a rock star, bringing in a ground type, and fuck their way up two ways from Sunday anyway, because rock types are also, or ground types rather, are also good against fire types. So I guess you're not totally screwed. Either way, it's still annoying. I'm going to be keeping Confusion on Curlia for a while, simply because of Psychic's much lower power point count. Also in this little house here... Uh, this is an old lady rest stop. It's pretty cool. You can just come in here, talk to this old lady, and uh, you will be able to rest up your Pokemon and fully heal yourself, which is cool. This requires the mock bike, which I have the act. Uh, I have the mock. That's correct. I do have the mock bike. Let's go ahead and register that then. The mock bike is also required uh, to capture Briquaza in the post game. Oh, I can't go that way. Okay, so that was kind of pointless. Whatever. On some orange berries. I'm probably going to collect most of the berries I come across. Three raz berries. I <laughs> get the joke. Alright, so we got another trainer on our way now. An elite trainer or whatever. Cool trainer, whatever the hell they want to call themselves. Oh, I still gotta fucking get my magic card. I keep forgetting that. I think there's a route up here that has water that I can go ahead and grab my magic card. And this route here uh, has a variety of spindas of different uh, appearances. Apparently, there's over one million different combinations, uh, permutations of uh, spinda spot patterns, which is really not important or relevant or anything. It's just a stupid gimmick that Spinda has. But there's also Skarmory's, as you can plainly see. I already have my Steel type, and I will get my Flying type another time. So Skarmory's not really useful. Plus, considering the next gym is a Fire type gym, Skarmory is definitely not going to benefit. I believe this area also has Sandshrew, though. Does it have Sandshrew? No, it has Slugma. Okay, so I don't need a Slugma, though. I totally forgot about this double battle. Metal Claw, double, double, no, double kick, there. I wish double kick would, like, if it knocked out the opponent on the first go, it would still hit another Pokemon on the second go in double battle. Make it a lot cooler to me. 
probably be difficult to patch or something. Else. Okay, another Skarmory. I don't need you. Thank you, bye. I also don't really need to fight most of these trainers, because they're kind of just in my way at this point. I think that's probably the reason that I go through this game so damn fast, because I've also never seen that item there, so that's a first. Um, because I usually skip the trainers, and I just go straight for, you know, whatever town I'm heading for. You know, because I usually would use, nowadays, I just use PK Hex to get my Pokémon to the level that I want them to be at, but I don't have to worry about level grinding. Because level grinding is typically what took up most of my time when I was playing the games when I was younger. I mean, level grinding is pretty much the biggest aspect of the series, really. Alright, get out of my way, lady. This is Lynette. She is the creator of the PCs. Uh, which is cool, I guess. Whatever. Not really important or relevant. But I need to gather my self of fire, a water type. Also, really fast, right here, in this little crater here, you can pick up a nugget. But my bag is full, apparently. God, they got rid of that mechanic later on. Let me go to... Let me see if I can sell some of this stuff. I don't need a lot of it anyway. So I'll sell that. Sell that. I don't ever use the X items, which are the, um, whatever battle items, whatever they're called. Do the guard spec, uh, Stardust. Dire Hit, X Speed, HP Up, okay, that'll do. Like I said, we'll go ahead and grab a Nugget that is sellable for 5,000 Poké Dollars. And here, by the way, is where you can talk to this uh, chubby gentleman here, and he will give you the ability to relearn Pokémon moves uh, at the expense of giving him a single Heart Scale. There's only two ways to encounter heart scales. One is through finding them randomly throughout the world, and there's only about a, a half a dozen of those. And the other is to grind them against, or to grind against uh, love discs in the wild in the last area of the game. Also, this uh, young girl, I think, uh, gives us the dig TM machine in respect to her brother. And this guy right here gives us the roar TM machine. And I have the rod, so let me see if I can't surf or fish myself up a Magikarp. Come on. Give me a magic. That'll do. Oh, it's really low level, though. Lower level than I expected it to be. Oh, but that's fine. Alright, so this little bugger will become my Gyarados. Uh, which I will be doing off-screen with PK Hex, uh, simply because I don't really want to spend a lot of time trying to train up a damn fucking Magikarp. Uh, but we are approaching far beyond our limits here, so I will go ahead and call this a video. Probably it for the session for today, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any ideas for future content, please leave your suggestions in the comment section down below, or on my Twitter page, at SoDirus. And until next time, this has been ZDS. Making it fun one video at a time, and I will see you guys in the next episode.